Welcome to your number one rugby podcast. This is Behind the Rat. And don't panic, guys. My partner is not sick. We're just changing t- things up in the studio right now. And Hello. the delicious Buka, it's the perfect studio. Go Google it. Go check it out. Partner, you ready? Yes, I'm yeah. here. How's things, bro? I'm Not good. I'm good. The taxi strikes are over. Oh, it's over. I'm feeling comfortable. <laughs> I'm excited for the show. We're at episode six. Episode six, eh? Huh? Unbelievable. And we got color in here. We've got we we slowly but surely moving. Eh? We're moving. Yeah? And I want to thank you for everyone that's watching our show, that's subscribing, yes. that are sharing it. Thank you, guys. We do appreciate your support. We appreciate, we appreciate a, your a support. Lot. But I've got one thing, actually. We got a lot of views, but the views and the subscribers doesn't match up. It's almost like a two-to-one. So y- you're telling me there's roof cakers out there? Eh? I don't believe so. I think we must just remind them okay. to subscribe. To subscribe. Yeah, we've got fantastic yes, viewers and yes. fantastic supporters. So don't be a bit lumpy and watch everything and say nothing. <laughs> 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 yeah, but we really appreciate it. We see the comments, we see the likes. Yeah, we love and it. And keep sharing it, guys. Um, yeah, Paigey, we got a. I'm excited, eh? We got a lekker lekker lineup for us. Eat um, me. What, what's eh? on the What's on the menu today? I can feel the power coming up in in in, in the studio. Okay, we got the ranger in the house. The OG Don't all lie. the way from Austin. Don't lie huh? to me. Yes, that's what it is. You, you who's that? You tell me. There can only I be one. I can't tell you. There's only one. Huh? There's only one original Power Ranger. And that is? Geo Eplon. Oh, exciting time. Exciting times, eh? Guys, huh? I'm like a kid in a candy <laughs> store. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait. Finally, we got the guy in the studio. Uh. Oh, that's awesome. And the people have been asking for him. Yeah, so we give the people what they want. 100%. And what they need. That's very important for yes. us. Eh? So do yeah. you have on? Yeah. Oh, Exciting let's times. Go. Eh? But we got, before we get to today, uh, we've got a pretty much a good lineup coming up. Okay. Um, we've got a couple of, cu- couple of um, international games. We're covering Scotland and France. We're covering Wales and, and, and Wales and England. And this is sp- an yeah. interesting one. And then we got the Springbok squad uh, the team Springbok out. Springbok team is out, yeah. That's Interesting. Taking, out, uh, taking on Wales. Yeah. Um, so we're super excited. I don't know about you. You have to tap into Gio's mindset. I can't and wait. And, and I don't want to miss around. I don't want to waste anyone's time. I yes. want to get straight let's to him. Let's get into it, yeah. So it's time for the Power Rangers. And let's get there as soon as possible. Okay. I'm Juan De Jong. I'm Rudy Pates. And it's, it's more fun time. There he is, partner, live and direct. We got him in the house. Gio Eplon is in the house. Yes, yes. Ah, Gio, welcome to Behind the Rako, brother. Um, how's things that side? Uh, thank you, boys, for having me. I've been watching the show for the last five episodes, and I wonder when is my Ooh. turn going to come. I thought I'm going to be number one because I was Juan's roommate mm. for many years, but yeah, he, I'm at number six. So He, he didn't I mention it, uh, Gio. He didn't huh? mention it. Yeah. Okay. They say no. no. Nothing, nothing, yeah. They say out of sight, out of mind. He doesn't make time for me. Huh? That, that's what comes in. <laughs> in Afrikaans, they say, a stuffy by the <laughs> Yes, yeah, see, welcome, um, welcome, um, Gio. It's a massive, <laughs> massive honor for us to have you. I think the people, Juan, mm. has asked for him. Yo, a lot. A His lot of people wanted to know up. where is Gio, what is he doing. So this is by request mm. from the people. We give them what they want. Exactly. Mm. Gio? Um, where are you in your life? What are you currently doing? Please share with us. Um, yeah, I'm, I would say post rugby. After mm. two knee injuries, I decided, listen, yeah, uh, in COVID, that company that makes these parts of this bodies, the mm. 80s bodies, <laughs> the early 80s <laughs> bodies. 70s or 80s, huh? Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Through COVID, it closed down and then I couldn't take another chance to, 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 Struggle with a CV joint, so I just mm. hanged, hanged up the boots. So now I'm at Stellenbosch Academy of Sport. I'm in finance. I'm an accountant here. And yeah, luckily I'm still in sport. Not entirely sport, but it's Stellenbosch Academy of Sport. And we're hosting different teams. And the Springbok Sevens are here. Having a Sassy Academy here. And some and, and some different parts that's going here. So yeah, it's basically life after rugby. Yes. So you're in the office now. <laughs> You can call it the <laughs> office, yes. <laughs> I always knew being in the office with you, Applon, is perfect. Because I, w- I was rooming for, uh, with him for five, six, seven years. And every time in the room, it's always like, uh, sh- uh, sh- um, there's someone at the door, get me coffee, switch off the lights, <laughs> all those type of things. So the orders were, were, were up and running. Uh, it was natural. It was natural for him to uh, know, yeah, yeah. direct things, yeah. So Gio, you've been retiring for how many years now? Um, how's the retirement going on? How was the transition? Yes. Yeah. Some big questions, yeah. Mm. Eh? 
<laughs> we, we going deep. We going deep. <laughs> some big squares. Some big questions here. The graveyard shift. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, but after I've injured my ACL, I think in end of July, twenty twenty one. Um, I still had like nine months to go, uh, and I and, and I think the boss was prepared to to let me play again. But I think for me, commuting from Pretoria to Cape Town, and my family was down here. I was in Pretoria. Um, it just got a little bit too much, and I also had the thing: if I rehab for nine months and I can only play for two months, I, I didn't see that any greater purpose in that. So then I came here to the office. I uh, I must say, adjusting to to life after rugby. It's tough in different ways. It's not impossible. It is tough in different ways. Not necessarily because you've been on the field yeah. and you're coming off the field. It's just adapting to your new role, um, adapting to understanding what you want in life or where you can go. And then I think the big thing is being in rugby, you've been a senior player, you've been yeah. um, teaching the youngsters. Now suddenly, um, I'm in the accounting department. Suddenly, you don't know what to debit and what to credit, and you feel <laughs> and you feel a bit silly. And I think, obviously, between that and your ego, it sometimes gets in each other's way because now you think that yourself. I've, I've, I've been in rugby. I've been a senior player. Suddenly, I have to ask people for everything. And I think that was a little bit of a battle for me. I think being off the field, growing up poopy and not oh, running I around. I know that <laughs> feeling. I know that feeling. Wasn't such a, wasn't such a challenge. Yeah. But I think for me, that that that. That little bit of battle um, in yourself, um, that was a bit tough. Yeah, transition is always tough. I mean, a retirement, I mean, you you, you dipping your, your toes into the water I'm now. I'm not dipping my toes. Huh? I am in the water. Are waters. you in the water? I am in the water. <laughs> yeah. no. Retirement is, is, is looking but for me around the corner. Look, look. <laughs> I've also got two knees, <laughs> you know, that have that have stopped my career. Yeah. Two knees, and it's tough. Yeah. It's tough getting out of bed. It's tough going down the stairs. Um, yeah, but the retirement, I must say, is also... Um, it's been a long journey for you as well, Gio. I mean, you've started your, your making your debut in 2005, was it? Sure. And um, from a, a young kid from Austin, you know, chasing Perla Moon around from, and then chasing uh, Overball, making his dreams come true. How was that transition, you know, all these the years, journey. you know, chasing yeah, the journey, chasing hmm. chasing your dream and, and, and staying focused on that plan? Yeah, I think firstly, we can't mention too much about Perla Moon. The intelligence service are probably watching this, so we <laughs> don't want to give any secrets away. <laughs> But I think uh, I've been blessed. Um, I've came to Martis to study, uh, and then everything started happening from my third year onwards, and I started playing. So it never, it was never my dream to play professional sport because of the whole thing of being too small. And at school, every single time I heard of being too small and being too this, I don't want to go back into that. But that whole Rick Merrill. And I played cricket at school and came to Martis, and I was my first day I played soccer for the or football. For the, yes, for the for the true. for the you hostel, the man of talent. Is it, wow! <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't that good. I was maybe a little bit fast and just kicked the ball to and and grind kicks yeah. <laughs> around the people. And um, and then my second year I played a little bit. You know, my third year I started playing, and then everything started to happen. So I think that's what kept me grounded a little bit of knowing that it wasn't always my dream when I was when I grew up because of circumstances mm. to be. A professional rugby player or what if you might call it but things just started to happen and and the next i was just blessed and the next thing happened and the next thing happened and it was just trying to keep keep going and obviously yeah that's how everything started and mm. and i was quite blessed to play until the age of 39 i won't recommend it wow and so don't do this at, yeah. don't do this at, don't do this at home uh, also blessed to play with Joanne. Eh? no 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 <laughs> definitely not <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I must say, play with him golf. Yeah, okay. he's a golf. Okay, <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Yeah, to carry that guy. Eh? He's but, not. He's not him. He carry him. <laughs> so you're just going back. I heard you spoke about it now. That um, that that stigma being called too small. Obviously, I know what it feels like. But I was fortunate enough to play scrum off, and most of us aren't taller than one point yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah. But you being <laughs> outside back, right? And you were the, actually the OG. The first yeah. guy that that got rid of that stigma of being too small. What was your mindset like being a player throughout your career? I think crazy to to say. I also started off at scrum off, and I think yeah, mm. third year, fourth yeah, they moved me. I couldn't pass as you were passing. My pass yeah. was terrible. I couldn't get the, the ball end, from the eight yeah. men's feet, so I was I was terrible at that. <laughs> so maybe they thought that this guy can play a bit, but just moving away from this. <laughs> <laughs> but I but I think stigma wise, it was tough. 
I was thinking about it the other day, not not to sound um, down or negative, but it was quite tough playing in South Africa at that time and getting that stigma. Because when I started playing in 2005, and not to say, I won't say bad things, but Werner Grief and who else was there? Percy Montgomery was the fullbacks in that age. And they were quite big. Werner Grief was a solid guy. And Johan Roots, I mean, yes, but, but you know Johan Roots. Yeah. So that was the kind of the competitors you were in, and, and, and that was the standard of fullbacks. And here comes a kid from Austin with the with the with the scrum cap, and he wants to run everything. So that's first year was that stigma. Oh, you can't run everything. Yeah. And then the other thing of obviously we know that rugby or it's a collision sport and everybody believes that you need to be big. And and there's probably merit for that, but I also believe that if you're smaller or whatever, there is a uh, a place in the game for you like Cheslin and Kirby is, yeah. is proving now. And I think that journey was was quite tough because I tell people over week in and week out it was for me not missing a tackle. So I didn't want even anyone to have an excuse about me missing a tackle or or, or couldn't dominate in contact. So I didn't care about attacking play while I was playing in South Africa. I was just please don't miss a tackle. Mm, yeah. Please don't don't do anything that people can say, see we don't small. Mm. And that's the thing we kind of we like that challenge. So, uh, we like it when people tell you you can't do stuff. Oh, huh? man, you yeah. know you can put that extra yards and you know um, keep working out and, and and just prove them prove them wrong. And but you never would have guessed. I mean, I was I was fortunate when I was in school. I loved the way you mm. played. And you have a stuff, mm? it's a, it's Yes, a, it's a you physical. Have a stuff. Yes, but like all the power rangers now are physical. I don't know what huh? is in the in the water <laughs> here in the Western Cape, but the boys are yeah. tough. They're physical in contact. And I mean, Gio was the first guy that actually got rid of that stigma. Mm. He's good enough. Doesn't matter the size of him. His ability was unbelievable. Yeah. Feet was... Mm. And Gio, you, you can actually um, come in here, especially when it comes to the sevens. The sevens <laughs> gave us that little bit of a push, you know, being physical, <laughs> you know, having that ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just stay out of this conversation now. You know, having yeah, that ability, you're learning a lot from the sevens, you know, to do the transition from the sevens to the fifteens and having that extra skill in, f- in contact, extra skill w- um, with the boot and I- extra skill with your hands. I think um you let me cop so big rice in Africa. I feel like putting <laughs> on my boots again. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the sevens helped a lot. I think back in the day the sevens wasn't this professional as it is now. The Iceland stayed says we stayed at Ice Nietlam. What's you want at the under nine? Times, yeah. <laughs> we trained my first training camp at Sevens was we trained, trained six times a day with Paul through and he, he really grooved us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like me and Cecil Africa and Renfro Dazerace conversation, he used to cut us to size every single day. Every single day, if you if you think your feet like wasn't on the ground, he will make you yeah. believe your feet is on the ground. And I think that skill and that responsibility of it's it's the same field. There's only seven guys. The responsibility to tackle your guy. The responsibility to take accountability and uh, accountability to, to take ownership for what you do and i think that's what seven seven brings so whether you attack or whether you defend there's an accountability um and the responsibility on you to i mean you might understand yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, like, there's, you can't hide there mm. and once you pass that obviously the physical battle of 15s come and, and that kind of thing but that that's what sevens teaches you and then obviously your skill to step and everything comes in but i think that ownership and responsibility that you, that, that you learn at sevens it's vital. Yeah, no, I must agree, eh? Because I was, I was also like starting my, my career at the sevens in 2008, also as a youngster. Now you have to tackle, you know, these big boys. And at the time it was like, you know, um, Mario Skuman, Skalk van Merwe, and Paul, all these boys, Jonathan McQueena. So you learn a lot of things when it comes to the sevens. But y- we spoke about the transition, especially from retirement. Um, Gio, especially with you, you having a fantastic career with the sevens and even with the Stormers as well. That transition to go to France and Japan, you know, Coming, having your comfort zone here, you know, the, the, the sun is perfect, the break is perfect, the family's here. Now you have to go overseas, you know. I don't know what reasons you had to go overseas, if it was for the moolah or whatever the case would <laughs> be. None of your but business. Yeah. None of but your business. But that transition sure. to, to learn new cultures, to play different rugby in different competitions, how was that for you and for your family if they went over with you? Firstly, I left because I couldn't stand my roommate anymore. It's tough. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy? Huh? We need to find out. <laughs> no, no, I think luckily for me, I, I had some people that advised me. I won't say good, but well, at that time, that it was a year before World Cup, and mm. I knew I wasn't playing for the box anymore. And I was playing Curry Cup and, and, and Super Rugby. 
And to move at the World Cup here was going to be tough for me. And I had to compete against all the guys. Although you feel that you're good enough, mm. the market will only allow a certain, I won't say a certain type of player, but the, the market will be flooded then by World Cup players. Mm. And so I moved the year before the World Cup. And then going to France, the first six months was tough because for 11 years I've been at, at Western Province. I had a certain, I had three streets or three ways to training. I knew everybody there. Um, I was always a senior, not the senior guy, but the, the guy who's there. And then other guys came in. I knew every single away game. I, I had a, a quite an experience um, 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 at Province. And then to move away, and suddenly the French is telling you, kick the ball. And you're like, why are we kicking? I said, just kick the ball. And I'm like, no, but in the Province, they said, and you compare South Africa and you compare the Western Province, and like, why are we doing certain stuff? And the first six months was tough. I was out with my family. I, was, I got married in February and I was without my family mm. there also and then the language barrier and driving on the wrong side of the field Ooh, and go to yeah. and go to the shop and take and your own groceries looking for something you can't ask anyone so you're looking you're walking like a madman through this aisle <laughs> and looking for yeah I won't say like we play I can't eat chips so I must use something else <laughs> <laughs> oh, looking for yeah. any looking for anything and then I got there and without realizing it and without but still having that stigma in my head like I, I need to prove I need to prove these people um, that I can play in France and I can play and I, and I can be what they want me to be and after six months or, and, and Bernard Jackman and I think Bernard Jackman is, is a commentator now in, in, in Ireland and Mike Prendergast is the backline coach with Munster and they were the two Irish guys there and obviously with some French guys and all they wanted me is to be me mm. and for it, it took me a while to understand that and once I understood that they just wanted me to be me, like all that stigma about don't miss a tackle. I still had my standards from, from, from Western Province or where I, I grew up, but not missing my tackles and doing my thing. But that stigma or that whole thing disappeared. Got to prove yourself it was, all I, the time. Yes, and I could just be me and I, and I could attack and I could play freely. And I think that was the first time I really played with freedom, not saying I didn't play with freedom or Western Province didn't give me freedom, but just to get rid of that tag and that stigma. I mm. think um, how that Jero is mentioning it, I actually spoke to you, I think, earlier today when I, I told him, Gio, my first time as well when I moved to France was the first time that I actually felt like I'm playing rugby without having that burden of you have to prove yourself yeah, constantly, yeah. man. Yeah. And it gets tiring sometimes. I don't know if you had the same feeling when you were playing and, and once you moved, obviously, but they, they do give you a sense of freedom in France where you can be whoever you want to mm. be and it's lekker to play like that. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Like, and, I, and I think, uh, and just in, it is not in all the cases that it's, uh, I don't, don't want to tell people go overseas and you can have the freedom. <laughs> but that, that's, that's what worked for me. And, and, and like you say, Paige, it was, it was just after the game, you, you yourself feel, yes, I was average today. And the people come mm. like, yo, you were great today. You were running through the people. I'm like, yeah, but I must be. I must be. Don't, see don't, it. don't care about they that. Don't see it. And I think that was just where I really, really enjoyed my rugby. I could go home. Um, um, yes, it was tough. You play in four seasons, like Juan, you'll know. Yeah. <laughs> like it's the same in the Northern Hemisphere. You play through summer, winter. So that's tough. Mentally, you play through three seasons. That's a tough part. But every time you go into that field, it's like you don't need to pretend to be anyone. If you want to be Batman today, you can be Batman. If you want to be Superman today, yeah. you can be Superman. But and was, that was the good thing for me. He was a power ranger. He was the power ranger. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, power ranger. power ranger. He was a power ranger. Yeah. And <laughs> happiness is very important. Oh. We'll be, like we spoke to, to Warwick as well, and he said the same thing. Okay, He wasn't pretty much that happy in, in, in France, but then he came back. Just He wants to play in that freedom. Um, and that's very important because that brings out the best in you. And I mean, for especially you've been there a couple of years, and this, the tries you scored was unbelievable. Oh. Yeah, La Rochelle stepping, stepping Ricky January. Yeah, uh, that's not right. Oh, yeah, uh, that's not. That's the try against Toulouse, to you, you had a crack of a season. Even like Brian was there at the same time with, with Toulon. He also told us in the group chat, listen, yeah, Gio, um, we're speaking about you in the video, so we're playing you this weekend. Be easy. <laughs> so uh, happiness does play a massive part, and especially for the youngsters as well. And, and People are there. It plays a massive part in, in what you produce on the field. You know, you can work hard, but once you have that shackles or that rustiness or, or, or stuff, um, less things to worry about, you can just enjoy yourself. It you makes play it so <laughs> much better. Right? It makes a massive, massive difference, I must say. Yeah, but he wasn't but done there in France, eh? Mm -hmm. you, you went to yeah. the other side of the world as well. Y yeah. So, yeah, you went from France to Japan. 
you're working with with Jake there, and then where did he go to? Huh? Home. No, no. <laughs> he went home. I like how you say it. No. I like how you say it, Paige. He, he, he went, he knows, went to Loftus. He knows when it's dinner time, what, what mountain, what table mountain. All I'm saying is when I mentioned home, I could see the smile <laughs> on his face. We, could, we, we had the same feeling. <laughs> Gee, I was the transition eh, from, you know, playing in Japan, going to the Bulls, not the Storm, as I was so sad. But okay. Um, yes. Yeah, I was that. Yeah, I think in France... I actually, I signed, I signed on for four more years at Grenoble. And obviously some things happened at the club. And, mm. But I, I missed it. When I left, I just wanted to, you know, you're like, almost like you, you're in shackles. And I left to France just to play rugby. But, and, I, and my team wasn't a, a top six team. We were always fighting bottom relegation. And maybe after three years, I felt, yes, sir, I, still, I still want to challenge for a trophy. Mm. I still want to play competitive That's rugby. Right. It's good, yeah. the freedom, but I still want, want that. And then Jake called and I went to Japan and, and, and I always tell people, France was good for my rugby. I mm. loved it. I was it's free. Yeah. But Japan, it was, it was almost like full circle. I, I got appreciated as a human being apart from the rugby. Like the way you yelp the, the Japanese boys, the way um, you respect them, the way you fit into their culture. They love you for that. They oh, value yeah. you for that as a, as a human being. And I think I was blessed enough to play the province mm. and play the competitive and probably the best fans fans in the in, in the world if you, if you look by stats went to france was it was completely free could play and be who i wanted to be and then be valid as a human being apart from rugby which sometimes you don't realize when you're in this whole game you just think you're a rugby player and that's yeah, all yeah. you are and they value as a, as a person yeah but that's good to see uh, especially what you 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 said earlier about you being you, um, and there's a lot of like you know you the f you, you the opa the father of the Power Rangers. You got Kurt Lee and Cheslin Colby and these boys coming through, and you had the privilege actually to work with uh, Cheslin uh, when you were at Western Province in 2013, and when you got uh, came back from from returned from Japan. Japan, he was working with you know um, Kurt Lee as, as well, and mm -hmm. we've we've seen how they spoke about you, and, you know, um, having the respect for you, you know, you showing them the way uh, how they got inspired uh, with you. I don't know about the look inspired, but I <laughs> carry yourself on and off the field. Um, so yeah, how, how was that working with them and seeing them, you know, thriving on on the big stage and going to the World Cup? Yeah, I think obviously I started just Ches not started working with Cheslin, but playing with Cheslin um, at Province, and you could see his special like, from from the mm -hmm. first day. And there was always doubts with him. Also, there was always doubts that yeah, he might be too small. Some people, so analysts on TV said yeah. maybe move to scrum off. Yes, <laughs> you know, you know that thing. And I don't, I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I think World Cup year over the year after that, I think he should have been player of the year. Mm -hmm. But I think it would have been a big knock to rugby that time that to to finally submit and say the smallest player in the world is actually the best player in the yeah. world. So I, I still have my, my I'm not a conspiracy theorist, <laughs> but I still have my, my thing there. And then obviously, currently, um, in 2000, I knew one journalist, um, Shafiq Matoni was still at the, at the zone that time. Mm. And we had a chat. And we played a warm-up game. Not a warm-up. We played 15 against 15. Like that That time in COVID, um, we, you couldn't touch someone and you have to train yeah. in a block. And we had some. We had a game. Social that distance thing. And, and the works. And Curtis stepped. I think Curtis stepped. In the, in the practice game, he stepped. Um, Chris Smith, the fly -off. He stepped him like he was in, in the five meters. And mm. he stepped in like he, like he almost ran to the... To the to the the stadium, not the stadium where the seats are. Yeah. And, to go and I told down. and I told this journalist journalist who listened here start um, writing about this boy. And I went actually I went to Jake and I said, Jake, listen, my job's done here. You said I must fill this gap till someone comes, but but there's yeah. there's the answer. Mm. And yes, like yeah. currently also his mindset and I don't want to I don't want to share too much, but. Mm. The morning of his first, I, I sent him a message. Now, Kurt is sometimes very strange. I sent him a message <laughs> during the week on Monday while they're making the team. And he doesn't reply. There's no Wi-Fi. Is the Wi-Fi in Pretoria? Wi-Fi doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. uh, don't reply. Don't say anything. Mm. Next thing, I'm like Saturday morning thinking, okay, you might want to watch the game. Around about 12 o'clock, he's phoning me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, normally, if I'm in that, in that space, I won't like, I'm focused. I'm You're first. not calling anyone. <laughs> yeah. There's a little chat. And he mentioned something to me. And I probably can't mention um, one thing. 
And that's why he's doing so good. Like he is, he's determined. If you know his story, where he was, um, yeah. but some stage he worked for Ed Britos um, to get a passport yeah. um, to, to go someplace. Like, and if you un- if you understand his journey and, and his determination, like um, it's it's unbelievable. And this is humbleness also. Yeah. Um, Curry Cup final, I think they played well. Curry Cup or Super Rugby final, and the, and they want to interview him. So he played well, and they want to interview him, and he's like, no, I don't want to be interviewed. And the guy's like, listen here, um, he, he asked, the, the, that guy asked me like, listen, me tell him, I want to interview him. He's like, no, I don't want to be interviewed. I don't want to be uh, yeah. famous. I don't want to be, yeah, I just want to play rugby. Uh, yes. And that's the type of guy he is. Um, um, and that's why both of them, Jetland and, and, Good, and yeah. funny enough, I asked my son the other day, so I'm talking so much. Uh, funny enough, I asked I my son it. the other day, listen here, um, Eli, who do you think who's the best player in the world? And he's just like, he's like ah, probably, Kobe and, and Curtis. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> so, so, so we I told mean, them go look at the YouTube clips. Go, 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 go. go. Watch that, <laughs> play. Watch that play. I mean, so, I mean, they're really doing a good job. And, and, and obviously, it's it's a nice pat on the back to say you started it, but it still takes someone to continue it. And I yeah. think, like, Brayton started it. Mm. Brayton also started it. But, like, somewhere it needs to continue. Um, and we need to give them the praise that they're still on this big stage. Um, we, I mean, guys are faster, stronger, younger now. I won't make it now. That's why. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Paige are in the swimming pool. <laughs> we are of it. And I won't make it now. Nowadays, in, in, in this environment, but they're still thriving. They, they, yeah. they, they, they brought a new like someone the other day, like two scrum cap wingers, who's probably like weighing less yeah. than eighty or whatever they they weigh now. Is now the face of kind of world rugby, Springbok rugby. So I think we need to give a lot of credit to them to continue this path because it's even getting tougher now. Um, well, yeah, though it was tough then to start the journey, but it's even tougher now to to maintain that now everybody expects of you. It's like, no, no, no. It's not It's not a surprise anymore. Yeah, It's standard now. Yeah. Mm. And it, yeah. That, that's that's cool to hear. Yeah, when he's speaking about the, sure. the less than 80 kgs, I remember yeah. fondly, Gio, <laughs> when I was younger and you have to weigh in Mm. And you lie, mm. or you put a weight in, <laughs> in your pocket <laughs> when you know it's preseason day number one, and you know you're not going to be heavier than 75. You take a weight, and when the conditioner is looking the other way, you keep it in your hand and you weigh yourself. So I, I know exactly, or when you have to do your height and you stand on your toes just so they can't use that against you in your one on ones. But I'm so happy that he speaks so, he speaks yeah. so highly about those two, and obviously. Them going to the World Cup, um, partner. Um, the squad is out, and it's been a week. Gio has had a week to think about no, it. To, to think about it. I know he's busy in, in the office, but <laughs> hey, did you see the squad? Oh, did you did you watch episode five to, to see, see the, the squad? <laughs> 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 Episode five, when I looked at them, I'm like, no, I'm dreaming because these two guys can't go to the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> there was guys commenting saying uh, it was Peter the Villiers and Alistair could see you in the studio. <laughs> I must have. De- uh, no, don't say that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what, if, what, if, what, what do you think about the squad? Gio? Yeah. Obviously, it's announced and there's four wings and four scrum offs and there's a lot of... There's a lot of content yeah, and people are talking, perfect. but what do you think about the squad going to the World Cup? I think probably unlucky first is Lukanya Ame and, and, and Andre Pollard not not being able to go to the World Cup or at the stage. We actually don't know what the plan is. You know, with Rashi, there's always a plan, but we don't know what the plan is in terms of that. And then a guy like Thomas the Tway who missed out, who was there at the last World Cup. Yeah, and so obviously, I would say it was tough because if you look at the squad and the makeup of the squad over the past three months, in terms of the four scrummers, Pedro, I don't know how, how many scrummers do you feel must go to the World Cup, but all of us feel maybe three is enough. Mm-hmm. But I think there was no one they could bring from the outside, and I, I, I think Lacanya Arms' injury was wasn't wasn't planned for. Yeah, he was supposed to go. Then one of the scrummers would would have stayed, but I think there's no one else outside of the squad they could bring in. We can always argue, you can maybe that they didn't late to Raymond Rue, but they haven't been with the squad for the last month, or not month, three, four months. So I think the logical choice was to reward the guys that was in the squad, whether it's four scrummies or, or what. And we don't know the plan. Um, I don't know, no one's going to get injured, or hopefully, uh, old times, no one's going to get mm-hmm. injured. Th- that part from the scrummies point of view, I think, well deserved for Mani. 
in terms yeah. of the way it came through, people will, uh, all of us outside or people will still think, yes, so we're waiting for that big game against the All Blacks and stuff. But we'll only see when he plays there and when we back him 100% up until then. He is a flyer that can play the ball. Are we gonna are we gonna play the way we that suits him best? It's another question. But I think in a competition that is the measure for Springbok rugby, yeah. it's been the best player of um, on by far. I, I think up front we always South Africa is always strong. The Springboks are always strong. Up front, where do you put in like Thomas? Where you put in Trevor? It's almost like a like for like. It's 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 always good. Um, locks. I think it's an, uh, uh, it's it's tough on um, on the to miss out with, with his injury, but I think Marvin has been has been good in terms of his line outs and in terms of his leadership for the Stormers. Mm. And wildcard John Klein, I mean, coming out of coming out of the blue and play uh, for South Africa after been playing for for for, for Ireland, um, I think he's also pinching himself still to this day. But I, I mean, if you grew up in South Africa, that's your dream to play for the. To play for the Springboks, and then I think the squad yeah. is the squad is quite good, but I think um, starting lineup or that will probably be the next challenge for we're going to start. We're going to play what type of game? Not what type of game we're play. Obviously, we we all behind the Springboks, and it was awesome for us even last week to see the squad. Um, you know, it's interesting um, taking two nines, taking uh, ach, taking four, four nines. Four. Two, um, yeah, two hookers, one ten, one fifteen. But we're all supporting the team. What message do you have for the, for the team uh, first of all, and second of all, for those two power rangers, you know, guys that looked up to you for for years, you know, um, what message do you have in in, in in putting them on the way for the rugby world cup in France? I think, firstly, I think for the team, it's it's gonna be tough. You're defending world champions. You're defending the world cup. So whoever is going to the World Cup is, wants to be the defending champions. So that target is always going to be in your back. But I think um, the main thing is for us as a nation is just to go out. Yeah, obviously, we expect to win. and we, But in sport, you know, that's not a guarantee. But just to inspire the nation and the same with those two, two, two boys. I mean, there's a lot of boys playing rugby because of them. Again, and, and looking forward and to, to play for their schools week in and week out or wherever it could be for their clubs and and, and just to continue the the the, the scrum cap the scrum cap <laughs> the, the power cap domination team, eh? power <laughs> I mean that they, they doing, doing fantastically well mm. at the moment I mean Curly came in this year and like we're talking about him as a starter and I mean Cheslin and, and that's also the other thing in terms of Cheslin like it's easy we always say it's easy to be uh, uh, what do we call it a one time wonder mm. yeah. but he's been consistent uh, with injuries, he, he's been unlucky, but he's been consistent over the last four and a half, five years. Yeah, and I mean, even yeah. currently, when every time he gets his opportunity, he, they, they're consistent. So I think that's probably the next step where their challenge is. For us, it was like just to make it acceptable for, we call it power rangers, for smaller guys to play. But it's their priority or their responsibility now to, to, to show consistency, to show that, listen, if these guys belong here, over a long period of time, because this, if they nail this this part of the journey, I think then the argument, the, the so-called argument, will, will be forever, because they still talk, they still talk about uh, the, the the light wingers and this, but it, they, it's, it's their responsibility to normalize it now. And, and I think I don't want to put extra pressure on it. They go into the World yeah. Cup, but yeah. I think by them just being themselves, yeah. normalize it. Now, Tio, thank you, thank you so much. I think. Um, we we you loved playing with him. I loved watching him. Um, Gio, thanks for your time. I know you're a busy man. You're probably gonna make some numbers and stuff yeah. there in the office. <laughs> you gotta make it work. Yeah, yeah. So we're Stay gonna focus. So Lots we're gonna numbers. say bye to you. But yeah. um, thank you for what you've done. Obviously, throughout um, your rugby career, it was a pleasure to watch you. I think yeah. the people obviously asked for you. There's a reason for it. It's because of what um, you put on the on the field, man. And the way you played the game and the way you conducted yourself on and off the field. It's and for us today on Behind the Rock, um, thank you for making your time yeah, to spend with us. I thank think you we do appreciate it. Gio, thanks for coming up, man. Really appreciate it, man. Obviously, we couldn't get the current power range on. He stepped us, but he is old enough. He yeah. can't step us. So he <laughs> must be on the <laughs> yeah. So, for us, I thanks a lot. Um, we'll hopefully see you soon and reply to my messages, okay? Like you just said about Kurtley, reply to my messages. Cheers. Have a good one, Jen. Cheers, your best. Juba, Oof. outstanding. That was a mouthful. That was a mouthful. And I've got I could knowledge. see huh? 
He is spending too much time in his office. <laughs> He's got a lot to say. Too much time. Too much time in office. Stuff down. <laughs> Colleagues of Joe Apron, please speak to him. Yes. Please converse in the on coffee the door. room. Knock, knock on the door. Knock on him, <laughs> check if he's okay. But I mean, great insight. Yeah, yeah, In yeah. all honesty, I think mm. um, fantastic insight. What is his journey, mm. his achievements, the way he sees the game, which is so cool. Yes, so that guy's seen so much. Uh, going to France, going, going to um, First of all, Japan. I mean... The ability for his body to last until the age of 39 is incredible, <laughs> incredible. on its own. <laughs> we spoke about Mona's day last week, 20 years. He, he's in the same boat. Yeah, and right? he's outside back. Yes. yes. To have That's speed for 19 years of your career. Mm. Speed and that agility and feet. Oh, my goodness. It's remarkable awesome. to have the OG in the house. Eh? Yeah. We're really, really excited. So, Gio, thanks for that. Thanks for, thanks for, for, for taking your time. Yeah? yeah. I know you're a busy lad, eh? family man, businessman. Accountant. Huh? That was, huh? you like to be out, outside. I wanted to study, mom. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to study. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't for me, um, <laughs> but we move on. <laughs> we move on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, talking about moving on. Um, there's a couple of rugby games that was on this weekend, interesting rugby games. Um, we had uh, the first one, but before we go to the rugby games, there was also like club rugby. We spoke about Gim and Boys I last, last week. Yes. But also in Paul, I don't know if you know about the inter-schools in the Derby and the stuff that's happening in Paul. Um, so at Boys I and Gim last week at yes. Forestra. This week we had uh, Ka in New Orleans, also a massive, massive game. Okay. It's, it's not I usually like 25k of 25,000 people that's... Um, with Gim and Boys, it was like 10,000, 15,000. That's it was a lot. Yeah. No school games. But is this uh, the little bird? He told me there was drama there in Paul. Please share. Okay. Please do the right thing and share yeah. with me. First of all, I must say congratulations to New Orleans for winning that game. Uh, it was an awesome, awesome game to see. You know, running a rugby, you know, when it comes to New Orleans and, and Kain is, is running a rugby. But um, yeah, what because happened? of the, the taxi strike that you spoke about last week. Yeah. They couldn't get the game was also almost cancelled. Okay, they couldn't get the game um, going, and then Friday, and s uh, Friday actually, they said, "Okay, cool, the green light is on." But now the people are entering the the stadium. But as the people are entering the stadium, Paul, Jim, and Boys Eyes logos are still on the field. And you know, you don't want to play things yes. on the field. You don't want to play for the Bulls, but playing the Stormers jersey. You don't like that. Yeah, you want to be in your comfort zone. You know, playing in the right uh, setup, right okay, venue and okay. stuff. And then the people decided, how can we get rid of these logos? They decided to take paint and, and, and chalk and cover the logos. <laughs> and I must remember, hey, these guys were playing 80 minutes onto that field. The guys were white. <laughs> <laughs> you mustn't laugh. Uh, I mustn't laugh. You mustn't laugh. But it was a good uh, game of <laughs> rugby. But it looked to me like the guys were working inside the Plascon workshop. Were right? they actually covered in paint? A lot of the guys were covered in paint. Oh my goodness. Because you can't... Uh, play rugby but only use like 80% of the field you need to be everywhere oh I thought the paint was dry no the they didn't have time they're trying to get the the, the fans out uh, whatever out but you know this ESCOM that also wants these little two hours they couldn't get it dry oh my goodness yeah. so there was actual players covered in paint actually players covered in there's a little bit of a drama there but I must say it was but still a good game um, you know f uh, well done to New Orleans and it's always a, a, a nice little derby Paul it's massive there's like Springboks yeah. a lot of Springboks Paul has got rugby yeah. players rugby teams there's a lot of like talent also coming from from that derby especially when you got New yeah. Orleans you've got like Clayton Blomick Clayton Blomick is Clayton Blomick is coming from the Mang that Hilton came from Roberts. yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of players and even with Kain as well Burton yeah, Francis Burton Francis was that there came from that Alga Watts that's also from there oh, wow yeah there's uh, even like Chester Williams as well that's yeah. fantastic. That so it comes from that derby. So there's, I mean, Paul has got too much rugby, eh? Mm. I was a lot I was of talent. It's yeah. like a fabric. Even with the schools there as well. Paul, Jim, Boys, I, Lambo, uh, Ka, in New Orleans. So do you think we'll there's there's going to be a few URC players, maybe a Springbok coming out of that derby as yeah, well in the future? Yeah, 100%. Okay, might, that's might awesome. Be yeah, might be two years. But that was good to see. Good to see it was a good game. Um, as well, and uh, congratulations to the audience. Hey, five, five in a row. It's back to back to back to back to back. Hey, the guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. So congratulations, guys. And then moving yeah. into the the hot topics, international rugby. Moving on to rugby World Cup. Yeah, um, we had Scotland versus France. Did you watch the game? It was good. Hey. I, I, I enjoyed. Was, yeah, I enjoyed the rugby. France looked undercooked, like a piece of bologna. Mm -hmm. You know, bologna mm -hmm. is not cooked. Yeah, <laughs> when you cut it, it's, <laughs> nice it's raw. Mm. So. I thought 
and that's always been my thing, eh? The Northern Hemisphere goes into the World Cup mm. in a kind of a preseason mode. Mm. They don't have rugby. They go in it with a preseason thing. And I could actually see th- the French team that played six nations and the French team that played that game. Mm. For me, there was a difference. Oh, yeah. Mm. A difference in tempo, a difference in quality. So I am kind of optimistic about the Southern Hemisphere's mm. chances in this World Cup again, partner. Yeah. Just watching that game. Yeah, but it was a good game because it was Scotland A, uh, the A team, the core and team, the and the French A team. In start GG was so awesome to see. We got a, we got actually got a lot of South Africans in that Scotland team. Two yeah. props, um, Skuman and and VPN now, and even at the backs as well. We at the wingers, the one from the Merve and, and, and Kyle Stein that played for Greek was. Yeah, we got you Jones as well. We can claim him. He was in province. Five Thomas. South Africans in the Scotland yeah, team. Yeah, he was born that side, but we can claim him. We can yeah. make it five. Yeah, so it was good. And Kyle Stein played well as well. He scored two, scored tries. two tries. Yeah, the opener. And, and what stood out for you from the Scottish team? I know we got we got mm. we playing them. What was the thing for you that you could see mm, that we need to worry about? I'm, I'm worried, eh, Paige, to be honest with really? you. Really? I'm worried. The, terms, uh, uh, the way they're playing with their forwards and the backs, that Finn Russell, I think he's in the same WhatsApp group as Manny Labok. Huh? It's razzle-dazzle. It's, it's, it's stuff you don't usually see from our 10. Usually 10, you just want him to kick, um, get us go forward, get to the corners and stuff. But he's throwing balls around. He's, he's, get, he's got these cross kicks, these chip kicks, putting guys into space. So it's going to be very tough to see how we're going to fight fire with fire, especially with Finn Russell there. And yeah. like even like Warik Galan said it as well, the way he trains, the way he moves, it's all about creating stuff. Um, and a guy like that, you need to put him under massive pressure just to make sure that he's not the guy. He, he can either have a brilliant game like last weekend, yeah. or when he's off, he can have a shocker that's... that's you yeah, it could be like load shedding. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's dark. <laughs> it's dark. <laughs> There's nothing happening. And that's what we want actually from, his, from him. So, okay, so it's Van Russell that stood out for you that, that yeah. for us as the Springboks, when we meet them in the World Cup, exactly. is going to be a bit of a And the wingers as well. Um, you know, Kyle Stein played well and Duan van der Merwe, but I think they're going to go with um, um, Darcy Gordon. And that's gonna put a power ranger versus a power ranger. They got s- nice, strong, big guy on the one side, and then you got the razzle. I must say, that when I watched them, the, the attack looked quite fluid. Eh? Mm, mm. The the ability to interact with the forwards into the backs, that's the scary. fluidity in the attack. I must say that I, I enjoyed it. Mm. I know in a few weeks' time we're gonna be up against them, so that's, that's gonna be a different thing. Attack, yeah. But I must say it was quite nice and pleasing on the eyes watching them attack. The freedom that they play mm. with. Mm. It doesn't feel like they 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 in a box. Mm. I feel like they got a lot of freedom yeah. that Gregory Townsend gives them, and it could be scary for us mm. if we don't take them On serious. On the tenth of September, On the tenth of September, gonna be interesting, yeah. Very, Two very different deep. contrast of playing rugby as well. Mm. Us who is more conservative, uh, fundamental rugby. Them who are, who are finding ways to win rugby mm. games, mm. finding different avenues to score tries. So that's going to be interesting on the 10th of September, is the it? 10th of September. South yeah. Africa versus Scotland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so was good. We'll see, we'll see. They must actually announce their squad as well, I think. Um, so Can't yeah. see any surprises there. Eh? I think they know yeah, who they got. Yeah, they're pretty solid. Yeah, it's just as they've. The centers as well. Tui Pelotu, um, Hugh Jones. They're 15. Um, they're obviously going to miss a steel dog. Um, that's why yeah, that is going to miss. Being retired. Yeah. So they're looking strong. They're looking strong. The Francis as well. Full strength. Um, uh, one question. Okay. Dupont? Yes. Talk to me. He looks to me like the best nine in the world. And I know you like your Aaron Smith. What w- What's your thoughts on your feels on that guy? Listen, first of all, I want to start by saying I've mm. never seen someone kick a ball. <laughs> the, the and when the <laughs> opponents catch it, Die wind van die bol is uit, partner. <laughs> hy is pap, sê wiel is pap. Die wiel is pap geskop van die bol. Yeah. So that was quite a funny moment yeah. for me in the game. <laughs> was, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I've never ever time. seen someone yeah. kick <laughs> die wind in die bol. Yeah. But coming back to the point, he's, he's obviously, I think where, where Aaron is fundamentally driven, his, his basics of the game is, is the best. Mm. I think the point is the other way. Mm. His X Factor sure. is like an extra loose forward. He's yeah. physically strong. He's got natural ability. Um, he can make something out of nothing, nothing which yeah. is scary. Mm. He can yeah. honestly create a try from nothing. Um, he can also save them as a team mm. just through his own individual ability. So that is the two contrasting styles. I still, oh, yeah. me personally, I lean towards Aaron. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just I, I think the way he plays rugby is the way I've oh appreciated yeah, yeah. nine play. What you want but that doesn't team. mean I can't appreciate Antoine Dupont. Mm. A lot of people also think he's the best in the world. 
um, which they probably are right as well. Mm. Um, so the French team has got individual stars across yeah, the their whole like squad. Whole squad, yeah. They've lost two key players. Jua, they lost Cyril Bay, mm. the prop, and they lost Roman Hintermak. They yeah, fly Hintermak. off. Hintermak? AC, Hintermak ACL. That's Big loss ooh. to the French team. That's long. That's nine That's to 12 nine, months. 12 months. That's a massive loss three, four weeks before the World Cup. Yeah. So I don't know how that is going to affect them. Will it affect the way they play? Will it affect their chances within the World Cup? Because even Antoine and Dupont has been it's a combination. 19 combinations. Salt and pepper. Salt they and pepper. Mm. You understand? They know what, what each other wants. Think. They think the same. They play the same club. They're domestic rugby. Mm. So that it's is going to be... It's a massive, massive. It's a massive blow. For me, it's a massive, massive loss. It's a massive blow. So now they're going to have a different team. Does it mean they are still rated the second best team in the world? Does it going to do anything to the chances of the World Cup? Yeah. Are they going to look different as a team? They're going to look different as a team. Especially massive repercussions to that injury. Yeah, they currently third in the world and they're playing the second team in 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 world rankings and it's it's massive. Like I said, it's like a Tom Brady or ten, and your nine is so crucial, especially with ten. It's like the Tom Brady of the team. He's got to run st stuff. He's got to move the players around, and that's just a massive blow. I must say, um, that's going to affect them in in the long run. They're still going to be good with the players. Yeah, that they have. still have good quality players. players. Quality players. Quality players. And, and that's where du uh, and Dupont needs to step up now, uh, making sure that he's the, the the core of of the team, and he's obviously the captain. So you will do that by by all means. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but the teams look solid as well. They got physical backs. They've got uh, physical forwards you know they, they um, yeah and they look like a south african or they i think they play a similar way to the mm. spring box mm. where it's a physical dominance type of rugby mm. where they want to run over you they yeah. want to bash you they want to they want to drain you by tackling big boys coming around the corner big outside backs mm. as well yeah the friends got big outside backs which dante. i saw dante going off as well hopefully he's not injured um so he's there they've got um, okay they got damien uh pino He's a no, fantastic, yeah. Yeah, fantastic Elusive. player. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's so all they around the park. They, they they've, got, they've even got the power range as well. Hey, Villiers, he's from uh, Toulon. Yes, with the scrum cap, yeah. They might be in the scrum caps from the World Cup. <laughs> I think these boys. <laughs> this, are this power range is coming in hot. Hey? Yeah, they've got too much power. So the Frenchies will be good at the World Cup. You agree? Th they will be good, but they're gonna miss in the mark. So, so, so question mark. So that's where I said last week. Uh, obviously, uh, the French is they, they've upset New Zealand in all other World Cups, but now um, I thought the French is gonna have that a little blur. But now because the mark is not is not gonna be there, it, it makes it for me a 50-50. So now I'm pretty much unsure. But yeah. like all the most teams are, are got lots of injuries. Injuries um, happen. You now, especially moving on to that England Wales game as well. It wasn't a good game. It was, it was it more was like tough on the it ice. was like a set Oster uh, um, a series. There's no, yellow cards flying wasn't. everywhere. There's this. Uh, I don't want to. I never want to say rugby's boring sometimes, yeah. but <laughs> but that game honestly. <laughs> that first forty minutes. That game had me doing babysitting duties at home. I was I was asking yeah. the wife, "Can I do something?" Multitasking. Multitasking. Yeah. Because I I dozed off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It was it was. It was yellow cards that like. Uh, and Nika from that Georgian referee, he, I think he gave like two uh, yellow cards to Wales. It was three yellow cards to for England, for England and the red card. It might and have been a tennis side game at the time. Yeah. <laughs> cards flying everywhere. Cards were everywhere. <laughs> yeah. but, but there was also in that game, all seriousness, um, mm. Feral Steckle. Mm. Yeah, red card. Will there be card. any bans following this? Is he going to miss some time at the World Cup? We 100%. don't know. We don't know if he was a South African, as people say on mm. the socials, he might be banned for four to six weeks, but we don't know what World Rugby is going to decide on that. Mm. We'll wait and see. Mm -hmm. So that might affect England as well. Yeah, and it's going to affect England. It will affect England. And for me, so you got a yellow card, you were sitting on a bench like for five minutes, and then all of a sudden they, they changed the, the call. Uh, through a red through card. Yeah, through a red card. But when I was looking at that game, him walking into the tunnel while his team is playing uh, outside wasn't a good uh, a leadership example for me personally. Okay. Because um, I feel like as, as a leader, they're struggling anyway because they, they're they playing with 12 men and they do well. They actually scored a try with 12 men and to come back into that game as well. Um, but f for me personally, it, it took it personal. He went into the change room with like 15, 20 minutes to go while his, his team is struggling outside. So that wasn't very good for my side and he's 100% okay. going to miss the, the first game i think they're playing argentina even the second game he might miss because he's gonna get banned from that because he's he's a, he's a regular 
<laughs> he's a regular, a regular customer. Yeah, but it wasn't a good si- a sign, obviously. Um, but uh, saying that as well, they they still finding the the ways forward. Uh, Ford, uh, um, George Ford actually got opportunity th- yeah. as well this weekend, and he did well. He, he changed that game. He gave him the opportunity to to actually win that game. I game still think end. England is at their best when he's at ten, Ford's at ten, mm. and Farrell is at twelve. Mm. The way they played under Eddie. Yeah. I still think that is the best way for England to go into this World Cup, for them to play their best rugby. But currently, in my opinion, partner, it feels to me like they've taken a, a step backwards mm. as a team since Eddie has left. Yeah, and and y- step backwards, not at the right time. It definitely at the wrong time. Because they, they their next game is um, France, the host. Yes. Uh, their last warm-up game. So they've got to play France as well. And I think France is going to go f- uh, guns blazing with, 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 with them just to make sure that they're ready for New Zealand. So I don't know. Um, they've got lots to think about. Um, I think With not a lot of time. Yeah, so they don't have um, Henry Slade that, that can play your 12, can play 13, that gives you that options. So they've got Oli, um, Oli and, and Marsh in, in the centres that doesn't have a lot of experience, but they're good, uh, good players. But um, yeah, that combination of Ford and, and Farrell has always worked from 10 to 12. I just like it, man. Yeah, because I feel like Marcus Smith, is, he, he cracks under pressure for me. Uh, when it's the big games, he, he, he's nowhere to be found. He's, his error rate is a bit high, but all, all the it other it games... It also like might be, as, 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 as um, Gio alluded to, in his, in his, it might also be a thing that he feels yeah. like he has to be a different... He has to play a different way mm. when he plays for England because the Alequins, he he's flamboyant. He's, mm. He, can he, move, he, he can looks like a Van Russell. Mm. He's got the he's skill. He's got freedom. the expectation. He's got freedom. He mm. can you can actually see it in the way he plays that he's got freedom, mm. and hopefully England can 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 give him that same platform yeah. and that same environment that they can create for him. But yeah. um, I still yeah, the think, yeah, the pressure there is, is unbelievable. The and World Cup pressure is even worse. As well. Steve Watwick, he, he's got to make the season then big calls because if it doesn't come through for him, because he's struggling already in the in the warm ups, if it, if the World Cup doesn't uh, uh, get going for him or they're not uh, effective in the World Cup and they've got the easier pool to to, to yeah, make sure definitely. they get they, they, they got to that first spot, if that doesn't work for him, there's a lot of lot of question marks around that England team. And then there was Wales, Juba. Wales, yeah. Wales, yeah. They, they look good. Wales looks good. They look good, yeah. Especially with, uh, in the first game, they played, they split the squad into half. They're like, they're like 50-50 on good players and, and, and the guys is giving opportunity in both games. You know, in the first game, you saw, saw a lot of like George North and those guys that play half penny and that play in this weekend. It was Dan Bigger and um, all the other guys. Yeah, Wales, um, since Gatlin has taken over, there's been a definite change mm. in the way they play. They're competitive all of a sudden. They... Before Gatlin, when Gatlin was coaching at mm. the Chiefs and it was the other coach, they weren't as competitive. Yeah, they 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 lost by actually far. They, they looked in disarray. Mm. They didn't look like a team who had identity. Um, now I can clearly see that they're going to be competitive in the World Cup, like they've always been. Wales is mm. always a force to be reckoned with in World Cups. Yeah, they might play a bit of a boring, not a boring brand. I don't want to say boring. They obviously find it that it's the best way for them to win rugby games mm. is through allowing the other team to play more rugby mm. with the ball. Mm. So they like to play without the ball rugby. Yeah, so much, so much talent in that squad Whoa. as well, and experience as well. And Dan Bigger is gonna make a massive difference. Um, and they've got, they've got so much names in there, guys. They're with gonna fo- be good 40, in the World 50, Cup, 60 uh, caps, and it would be interesting to see um, w- what the coach, what team they're gonna put against up, uh, up against South Africa, um, Gatland. He's a sneaky guy. He knows what South Africa South Africans can do. So he's gonna come up with a lot of plans. And like he's been he's been the coach of the British and Irish Lions team. So he's got good intel into us. He knows what what's happening. Yeah. He knows what's happening in Cape Town. He knows where to get the Gatsby here in South Africa. He's also had our number. <laughs> he he's had our number in the past few years. Yeah. I would actually say the past ten years. Mm. He's had our number when it comes to Wales. You I think, think you think they're gonna come f- with a full, full squad against us this weekend? I think both teams are going to play really strength, strength, full strength teams because mm. after that, it's two weeks before the World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you need to g- get the guys out there. You need to get the guys out there. You need to give them 60 minutes of playing time. So I think Wales is going to play the their full strength squad. And I think us, we're also going to go to closest to our best team yeah. possible for that game. And, and our team is out. We've got our team against... Wales. Wales is it this out? weekend in Cardiff. Our team is out. Let me run through it quickly. Um, so obviously we got it's a strong team. We got Steven Kitsov, yes. Malcolm Marx, yes. Franz Malerbe, John no Clay okay. is getting his opportunity as well. Um, Archi Sneeman, um, you know, also getting an opportunity to prove himself, especially the last game before the All Blacks in Wickenham. Yes. And then Foot. 
The president is back. Sia Kulisi. Huh? Sia Kulisi is back. Hey, he's getting some game time before the World Cup. Awesome. And, and we want to see that. We that don't is, want that the is, rustiness. That is great, great news. We don't want the rustiness in, in, uh, around this game. Yeah. So uh, hopefully Fantastic. he can sh- shrug that off and, and, and have some, uh, like, you know, get in good form before the World Cup, especially when uh, that weekend game, we will get our chance there as well. Peter Steph, the 12 will be on seven, and then Jasper, if he said eight. Um, Jaden Hendrickson. Finally, finally, yes, the young man back. Is, is, huh? is, is back. Back again. Good news. Yeah, so he's back. Mane Labok, uh, only 10. He's back. Yes. <laughs> Nothing new. Then Cheslin Colby moves to 11 this weekend. Okay. We've got the Power Rangers at 11 this weekend. And Caden Moody. On the 14. We need him in a good mood this okay, in well, Cardiff. Yeah, so uh, he's, he needs he's to be in good mood. Good mood <laughs> this week, uh, weekend. And then the centers, obviously, Damien Dialendi and Jesse Creel, the from, uh, formidable um, center combination. And then Willie okay. the at the back. Yes, that is an interesting. Hmm? I think that's actually, by the looks of it, Rush has gone for a full strength team. Full strength team. Uh, team. Because they need to, we, we need momentum now. We need momentum. I've, I've been saying that to you. Mm. For since the show has started, time for opportunities is gone. It's finished. Yeah. So he's gone for full strength team with the two. I wouldn't say surprises. I want to mm. say big inclusions. Yeah. Being Sia and Jaden. Yeah. We gotta see what uh, what they're up to. Uh-huh. I think for Sia it will be a seamless seamlessly slotting back to mm. it. As mm. long as he's yeah, fit, yeah, yeah. his knee is good to go. Mm. I think once you are uh, forward, it's a much easier transition back into playing. Yep. For Jaden, it might be completely different. Yeah, He hasn't he hasn't seen that it's situation. Been a, it's been picking up the pace of the game, mm. not having time at Curry Cup or not URC, going yeah. straight into the battle of, of Test Rugby. Um, but I don't doubt that he's good enough. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It he might take him ten minutes the in the beginning just to pick up the pace and get accustomed to mm. to the pace of Test rugby again. But from a talent point of view, an ability point of view, that kid has got everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm excited to see him as well. Uh, yeah, you know, we got a six-two. We've got Grant Williams on the bench as well. So oh hopefully, yes. with the six-two in the day. bomb squad, they can make a uh, a big difference. Good to see Grant back as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so hopefully he'll get this opportunity. Obviously, the last time when he got this opportunity didn't work out for him, but he's got two more games uh, before the World Cup just, just to make sure he, he gets going. How do you feel about that team? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that team. There's, there's a couple of guys, obviously, good to see and the boys back. Yes. Um, you know? um, but yeah, um, it all depends what, uh, what, what the World's Boykies is going to bring to the party and the World's Boykies are going to play at home and they've played well against England this fo- last two games. So I'm looking forward to this Saturday at quarter past four. It's going to be a massive game in Cardiff. Okay, Springbok rugby against Wales. Oh, yeah. Warm up game before the World Cup. This is exciting. This is awesome. Mm. I must say that team. I'm happy. Mm. I'm extremely I'm happy. Say, yeah, mm. yeah we're ex- excited to see what's this. What's yeah, happen this happy our captain is back. Mm. It's good going into the World Cup with our captain having game time. First yes. of all, mm. he's battle hardened. He's ready to go. See us back. That's fantastic, yeah. guys. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, he's right, buddy. Yes, see, that's it, Ooh, eh? That was a mouthful. Good to have uh, Gio on the show, you know, as a Power Ranger, uh, giving his views on the World Cup. Um, and just catching up with him. Catching up with him. Finally, uh, I sent him messages. He didn't reply. Out of sight, out of but mind. But I think he was angry because he also wanted to be on the first episode. <laughs> I think a lot of p- guys, we can't have everyone yeah. on the first episode. Okay? We're going to get all of you guys on behind the rack. Okay? Yeah. yeah, and guys, make sure, subscribe. They've got to like, please, and they got to share, yes, and they got to keep going with that. We really appreciate everything. We Sweet. like that. We, s- we see all the comments. We see all the likes. We um, see everything. So th- yeah. So so thanks for tuning in. Um, to your number one rugby podcast. Say it again. Say it again. To your number one rugby podcast. I can't right? hear you. Huh? Say it again. Do Say it again. Number one rugby podcast. Ah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, I hope to see you guys next week. That was episode six. I'm Juan De Jong. I'm Rudy Page. And, and the, the rock is clear. clear.